Hello students. This is Ashish Patil from Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering. We are discussing the concept of total quality management and last time we have seen the concepts of cost of quality and TQM framework. Now today we will discuss various quality gurus in the area of total quality management and their contributions. Now when we discuss about quality gurus, we should take the example of Japan. Now Japan when it got bombarded uh, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it got on back foot from the aspect of businesses and it was considered a country worth of producing scrap. Now, what has happened during next 30 to 35 years that this particular tiny country became the second largest economy of the world. So, that is because of the various quality gurus and their contributions from Japan in the area of industry. So, let us see what these quality gurus. Now, when we discuss concept of quality gurus, there are majority of the quality gurus from Japan. Now, let us see what are the various contributions by different quality gurus. Now, first one is Walter Alfred Shevard. He has developed the concept of statistical control charts, then PDSA to manage the effects of the variations. W. Edwards Deming came out with 14 points for quality management, then PDCA cycle, plan, do, check and act, then 7 deadly scenes and diseases based on the quality management perspective he has came out with. System of profound knowledge also he has proposed. Then Joseph Juran, uh, he has defined quality as fitness of use. He also wrote a book that is quality control handbook called Bible of Quality and many of the industries take reference of this book for overall quality management as such. Then habit of quality, quality triology he discussed. Again 10 steps for quality improvement he proposed. He categorized the cost of qualities. Last time we have also seen these uh, cost of qualities. Then next quality guru is Philip Crosby. He has came out with four absolutes of quality. Then he has proposed 14 steps for quality improvement. He has coined the concept of zero defect also. And also he has written a book, Quality is Free. We are discussing some major contributions of important quality gurus who are considered as the contributors in quality management throughout the world. So, in that category, let us see some of the quality gurus and their contribution. Next is Masaki Imai who propounded the concept of Kaizen. Now, Kaizen is Kai means change and Zen means betterment. This is a Japanese word. So, change for betterment. So, if you are in a manufacturing scenario and if you are developing any product at your workplace, if you go through some minor improvement and if such minor improvements are there, such small, small, small minor improvements will lead to some of the major improvements and that is what a Kaizen tells about. So, anything that Kai and Zen that is change for betterment, anything you do for betterment of your processes that will ultimately will be considered as Kaizen. Then next one is Armand Feigenbaum. He came out with concepts of industrial cycle, hidden plant, crucial elements of total quality. Now, these are all different concepts. Okay, Some of the concepts we may discuss in total quality management also. Next quality guru is Karu Ishikawa. Now, 
Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram. It is also called as cause and effect diagram. It is one of the important tool which is used throughout the world for finding out the causes, root causes of any particular problem. Again, Ishikawa proposed company wide quality concept, then concept of quality circles he proposed. Another quality guru, Jainichi Taguchi, came out with concepts like quality loss function, then product development stages. Shigo Shingo, who is one such quality guru, considered for coining a term zero quality control, that is ZQC. Again, the concept of Pokayoke or error proofing is coined by Shigo Shingo also. Then, the concept of just in time that is also coined by Shigo Shingo. Now, these quality gurus have contributed lot of things in the field of quality. So, we are discussing some of the quality gurus whose contributions have impacted a lot on world's manufacturing scenario. So, let us discuss one by one some of the contributions by these quality gurus. The first one we are going to discuss is W. Edwards Deming. Now, Deming is a renowned consultant who was also known for leading Japanese business leaders in the field of quality as well as productivity improvement throughout the world. Now, Deming was famous for his 14 points which he has proposed. The first one is create constancy of purpose. When you are into manufacturing scenario and when you are developing any particular product, then you should create constancy of purpose towards improvement of the product as well as service so that it should become competitive and your company should stay in business over the longer time. The basic purpose of the business is obviously to produce the profit as well as to serve the society by providing some jobs also. So, the first point he emphasized is to create the constancy of purpose for your business. Then, second point is adopt the new philosophy. Now, you can see that the technologies are at cutting edges. Day by day, you can see newer and newer technologies are coming. So, it is the duty of each and every organization or its management or its manager to adopt the new philosophies as and when they come to stay in overall severe competition. So, you know that we are in a new economic age. So, no longer we will need to live with commonly accepted levels like delays, mistakes, defects in materials, defective workmanship. So, you should always improve and you should always adopt the new philosophy. The third point is cease dependence on mass inspection that is to eliminate the need for mass inspection. The quality should build in the philosophy of every employee. The way of life to achieve quality by building quality into the product that should be the first motto and not to have the mass inspection of that product. So, you have to cease dependence on mass inspection. Next point is improve the quality of incoming materials. So, what it wants to say is that you should end the practice of awarding businesses only on the basis of price. Okay. Previously, the materials are judged only on the basis of price, but instead of that, you should depend on meaningful measures of quality as well as price. So, both the factors that is along with price, the quality of the product should also be seen. Next point is find the problems. So, you should be in a position to find out constantly the problems and to improve the system of production as well as service. So, you should be able to continuously reduce the waste as well as 
improve the overall quality as well as the overall productivity. Sixth point is institute modern methods of training and education for all. So, though it may be top management, middle management or say your junior management or your supervisors or workers, it is the time that you should always have continuous training and education for all. So, modern methods of on the job training for example, you can say that control charts to determine whether the worker has properly trained or not, whether he is able to perform the jobs correctly or not. Okay. So, again you should use the statistical methods also for these training. So, it is the time that you should make aware yourself continuously for training and education so that you should survive in overall fierce competition. Next is institute modern methods of supervision. So, there should be emphasis of production supervisors who must be helping in nature to all the people in your organization so that they can do a better job. Then you should have the improvement of quality if the supervision is proper. So, the supervision as well as the product quality, they are correlated. If the more, the better supervision, the more will be the quality. Next point is fear. Now, every human being suffer from this particular characteristic. So, fear is a barrier to improvement. So, therefore, the management or say supervisors have the prime responsibility to drive out the fear by encouraging effective two-way communication. Uh, there may be some of the fears for example, fear of change or fear of fact that it may be necessary to learn a better way of working than what we are doing now or there may be a fear of effects of change on worker job because every human being always resists for change. So, all these fear should be removed and for that you should have the encouraging effective two-way communication between your workers as well as the management. Next point is break down barriers between department and staff areas. So, what it talks about is that people in different areas like research, design, sales, administration, production, quality, dispatch, assembly, they should all work in teams so that they should tackle down the problems in effective manner and to improve the overall product and service performances. Next point talks about eliminating the use of slogans, posters and exhortations for the workforce demanding zero defects and new levels of productivity without providing methods. Now, this sentence that is without providing methods is very important. Only demanding zero defects and if you do not have any methods as such to gain those zero defects, then it will not be a having the fruitful effect. So, therefore, you should provide the best possible methods to achieve the zero defects. So, these may only create adversarial relationships if you do not have any methods to achieve the zero defects. Next point is eliminate arbitrary numerical targets. So, what it means is that eliminate work standards that prescribe numerical quotas for the work force and numerical goal for people in management. So, only on the basis for example, if you are engine manufacturing company, so we are going to manufacture say 3000 engines this year of say category A and 4000 engines of category B. So, such kind of arbitrary numerical targets you should eliminate. Rather, you should substitute some aids and helpful leadership so that people should get motivated 
to have the overall target achievement. Next point is remove the barriers that rob the hourly workers and people in management. There should be the right to pride of workmanship. That should be the culture of your organization. For example, uh, judging only based on annual merit rating, uh, you should avoid such concepts. Rather, you should think on improvement in quality of work life, then definitely you will achieve the best results from the employees. Next point is institute a vigorous program of education. So, education always play important role to encourage the people among your organizations. So, you should encourage for self-improvement to each and every person involved in your production process. Next point is, that is the last point, that is 14th point, that is top management's permanent commitment. So, your top management should have the permanent commitment for ever improving quality and productivity. And these two terminologies must be clearly defined. Also, it's management responsibility to create the structure which will continuously take the follow-up of the previous 13 points what we have discussed. So, today we will stop here. So, before that you just go through this MCQ that is who coined the term Kaizen. Let us pause the video for a while and answer this question. So, fine, I guess you have gone through the question. So, today we will stop with this session. Next time, we will come with another session of another quality guru. Thank you.